All right, let's start first with um, left-handed drivers. What's going on with that? You know, I, I face so many different forms of discrimination in my life. <laughs> to see that the lefties, I mean, there's a bag full of drivers out there, but it's all right-handed. Now, I can play right-handed. If I have to beat somebody right-handed, it's going to be really ugly. I, I've been through it all my life. It's, it's depressing. I have to go to the stores, get asked for special needs. <laughs> Uh, I think, I guess Mickelson and Weir have to win like eight majors in order for us to get a little more depth. All right, listen, uh, Cal Ripken was out there this morning, truthfully, at uh, 7.30, and uh, it's almost 9.30 now. He's, he's got an hour 45 on the practice range. See, it's not surprising, because uh, he needs to work that hard to get his game in gear. <laughs> no, and the funny thing is, you know, his kids are a little older, so, you know, the wife just, they're, they're in school already. I got three little ones, six-year-old, seven-year-old, and a four-year-old. I can't quite just leave the house. Uh, hi, see you later, honey. I'm, I'm taking off for golf. Doesn't work that way. I got to make sure that they get off nice and calmly, so I don't get a chance to uh, work out as much on the game as Mr. Ripken. All right, listen, we've got a, a, a charity here called DC Cap. Uh, what is their importance to you, and, and how do you feel about helping out an organization like that? Uh, all, I, all I know is I'm, I'm a hometown kid. I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland, uh, and any chance, and I know what I went through growing up in the, the public school system. Uh, any chance. If I had some of the opportunities that these kids will now have through the work that DC Cap does, you can't argue with it. So it's a positive thing. It's as simple as each. How do I put this? Let's think about this for a second without getting emotional. You know they're touching lives. Yeah. You do, and there's so many stories out there, and you, you look at, it's like one little miracle happens, you know, and if, and if it's, it's that trite phrase, you know, if I touch one person, then it's all worthwhile, well, that's the case here. Yeah, it's amazing what they're doing, and I think most people, or many people, can take for granted the fact that, you know, to have access to information about scholarships and applying for college, you know, it's a whole different scene in some of the more challenged cities. There's no question about that, and you, I mean, when you look at today, what it costs to put a kid through school, now, I got three, as I said, uh, I'm going to be really sucking up the Cornhouse and move on for a long time to come. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's an awesome thing uh, that, that parents are facing out there as far as how much education costs. And in order, and any chance you can help somebody along, uh, it's, just, it's a no-brainer. All right. Um, I've noticed you've got a, a Nike swoosh here. Are you, uh, you, you sponsored? I, uh, yeah. Or did you go buy the hat for five ninety five down there at the D.C. Convention no, Center? Nike asked me to wear it uh, in uh, only in the morning. It's just kind of odd when, when most people won't see you. Uh, but, uh, through the day, I'll start wearing my own. <laughs> yeah, I've got a Nike swoosh hat, but um, it, it, I also, uh, my sponsor is, is Rogaine. Rogaine, that's, that's very right. Nice. That's why I wear my Nike swoosh that's hat. That's very nice. Well, I, I try, and you'll find that I try to look as much like Tiger Woods as possible because that's about as close as I'm going to get. Hold on a second. No, not working for me. Well, you got to flip this I, guy. I, gotta, I don't see well, any oh, gotta, Well, I'm married to a blonde. No, actually, she's a brunette. My wife's watching this now, and I'm in huge <laughs> trouble. My, my marriage. Is a, no, that's not your gonna work first wife. Yeah, <laughs> and now my last, yeah. Elon Nordegren. Hey, listen, would you be more nervous playing with Tiger Woods or Eva Longoria? Uh, what am I playing with, Eva? <laughs> okay, and, and seriously, on on uh, on the on the real serious side, I'm, where did you discover golf, and, and what is it about this the game for you? Uh, I watched my high school buddies play it and thought it was a sissy sport. Then I went and worked in Augusta, Georgia, at the CBS station there. And so as a sportscaster in Augusta, if you don't know how to play the game, it's almost part of, well, if he can't play, then he can't be a sportscaster. So I worked out four days a week. I would play. I took lessons. Got a chance to play Augusta National three times in my life. So that's, that's where it was really born. And now, because I used to play baseball, football, uh, softball, that was, my, that was where my competition was. Golf now is the only place I have for the competitive spirit left. So in order to beat my friends to a pulp, uh, that's, that's, that's where the love is. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.